Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today. My name is Mariana Gonzalez Roglic. I'm Director of Ecosystem Analysis at Conservation International. And I want to talk to you today uh, about Trends.Earth. Trends.Earth is a tool that we created at Conservation International in collaboration with NASA and Lund University as part of a jeff funded project, which have the objective of analyzing uh, the different methodologies that are available uh, to, uh, to look at changes in land degradation using Earth observation data. So for the last two years, we have been reviewing, collaborating with different research centers, and came up with this tool, Trends.Earth, which is really powerful for allowing countries to do their land degradation assessments for the reporting to the UNCCD, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, but also uh, at a more of a project scale for analyzing the, the effect of different interventions in the field. So I'm gonna, in this very brief presentation, I wanna give you an overview of, of the project, of how the tool works, uh, and how we're planning on moving forward. So, um, the tool is framed around the reporting to SDG 15.3.1, the Sustainable Development Goal 15.3.1, which require, require countries to do assessments of, on, on the changes in land productivity, land cover, and carbon stocks uh, to then assess in an integrated way what, what is the proportion of land degraded over total land area. So the SDG 15.3.1, requires the estimation of changes in, in land productivity, land cover, and soil organic carbon, spatially to identify areas that are degraded in each of these sub-indicators, and then integrating them, the three of them, into a final SDG. And this is what this tool, what Transport Earth, allows you to do in a very simple way, systematically, very, very easy to replicate in different geographies, in different time periods, with, uh, with methods that are replicable uh, and, and scientifically valid. So Transport Earth, uh, the user interface is the, the tool through a QGIS plugin. QGIS is a free and open source software which allows anybody to download it and to download the plugin. And the user simply needs to, to define the time period, the, the geographic area in which they want to run the analysis, and then they submit a task, which is being submitted to Google Earth Engine. So all the calculations that the tool does are run on the cloud. We're using Google Earth Engine cloud computing services to make use of a time series of NDVA data going all the way back to 1981 using ABHRR products and then MODIS from a recent time period. Uh, and this, this makes the tool really powerful because it allows the users to do very sophisticated time series analysis, which before would have required uh, to download the data, do pre-processing, identify which are the methods that, that are relevant to the different geographies, and then implement them, which, which is not a very straightforward process. So right now, the tool allows the user to define the time period, what is the area they want to run the analysis. The tool has different functionalities for doing climate corrections, uh, Corrections for precipitation, soil moisture, evapotranspiration, a different a different combination of indicators that allows you to have control over the analysis, but doing it in a way that it's uh, that it's systematic, that, that it's, it can be replicated and validated. So this is sort of the overview of the tool. The user uh, interacts with the tool through QGIS, the calculations are run on Google Earth Engine, and we also have a map interface which right now it's not public. We're, we're going to make it public in the near future, but right now we're just using it to share with partners sort of the preliminary results that we're having. Um, this is QGIS in a little bit more detail. Uh, the tool is that line of black icons that are highlighted with a red box. So like I said, the tool, yes, allows you to do the changes in land cover, primary productivity, and soil organic carbon, but it also has other functionalities like performing time series analysis, adding contextual information to really interpret the results, download the original data if you want to run the analysis yourself. Um, you can go through the tutorials, which are in our website, Transport Earth, for learning how to use all the different functionalities. We have step-by-step -step guidelines, step-by-step uh, -step guides, sorry, um, 
So you, you can very easily learn how to use the tool. One thing we noticed when we did our first workshops was that we, we as geospatial analysts, we, we thought that the, the map was the end product, but the, the early users of the tool very clearly made us uh, know that they needed also a tabular output. So the tool also generates an Excel file in which you're going to have the areas estimated for the final SDG. The one you have here for this example, you see that the total area of the of the area analyzed was 200 square kilometers, and then of those, 27% show improvement, 47.6 show stable in terms of the combination of land productivity, land cover, and soil organic carbon and 24% show degradation. So that will be the SDG for this, this study area. And then as you can see there in the bottom, we do have these results also disaggregated by each of the sub-indicators. So you can look at uh, what are the, the areas of the different trends in productivity, soil organic carbon, land cover, and then the final tab, you have the specific requirements for UNCCD reporting. So you have each of the different tables with all the pre-filled information that you can just copy and paste from this Excel file to the UNCCD reporting table. Uh, all them, as you can imagine, uh, we're summarizing these into a few maps and a few tables, but all the methods are, are documented in our website, trans.earth, and also in a GitHub repository. All the code is free and open source, so you can go explore it and and learn all the details about it. In terms of the impact of the project, we had three project workshops, one in Tanzania, one in Kenya, and one in South Africa. Uh, the four pilot countries of the project were Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, and Senegal. Uh, so we covered those countries and one more, South Africa. And then early this year, we have five regional workshops uh, that the UNCCD had organized to for the reporting process, and they invited us to, to train all the signatory countries of the convention to use trends with Earth for analyzing trends in land degradation. So from our end, that was extremely successful. We trained over 900 users from 142 countries, and the tool currently has now more than 1,000 registered users. So considering that we launched this tool by late September last year, so approximately 10 months, that, that was a very fast update on the tool. Given how well received it was, we're now working on expanding some functionality. So we added a, a function which looks at, at forest cover and forest cover loss and changes in biomass to estimate emissions. It's used in, a, again, global data sets uh, to generate this emission, this estimate. Um, and we were also collaborating with a different team at NASA on SDG 11.3.1, which is the one that looks at land consumption. So we're using these tools or the same, uh, the same approach using Google Earth Engine to generate maps of urban extent and then integrating that with population density to estimate SDG 11.3.1. We are also in conversations with FAO to see if we can link their tool, Collect Earth, which is, has a big community of users using Google Earth images to collect training data. We're thinking of integrating that to, with our tool to generate land cover maps, which is a need that our users have identified given that global land cover maps are not uh, that accurate at a fine scale. And we're also working with the UNCCD and, and, and some countries in their, their assessments of land degradation, the baselines, and then the, the planning for uh, land degradation neutrality projects. So that's all I, I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope this was uh, easy to understand the, the very general overview of trend.earth. There you have uh, our email, which is trends.earth at conservation.org. And then you can, of course, download the tool from QGIS from the, from the plugin section. And you can check our website, trends.earth, 
in which you're going to find all the documentation, the explanation of what each of the indicators mean, uh, references to the data sources used, the code, uh, and of course our contact information if you if you have any questions or want to reach out to us. So that's all from me. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.